What is up, Savage Farmer? We're back in today with another video, and today we're working with Q's IS300 with a Nuke Performance Surge Tank. I've already made a video about this, about installing this in an E30. The video didn't really hit that great, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this again, unboxing, not quite to the way that I did last time because you can watch the other video, but you'll be able to see what comes inside right now since I haven't opened the box. And then we're going to be going ahead and putting it in this car since this is a car that has a major fuel problem, and I think everybody should be going to this unit or probably the powerhouse version of fuel pump in here. All right, so let's open her up and inside, like I had showed before, we have a wrapped surge tank. So out of the box you see right here, surge tank, got a bunch of ports that are capped off. We're gonna go ahead and open. We gotta go ahead and remove the Allen and you can see what comes inside. Inside you're left with an install kit that has some fittings and a lot of the stuff that you're gonna need to get this done. But for right now, we're just gonna focus on where we're gonna put everything and uh, I'll do the pumps and install the pumps into the tank later on. I'll show you something real quick uh, with the IS300 with the back of the car. I know everyone's gonna be kind of interested about all this stuff. So all you gotta do, do to get to the fuel pump is pull the seat up and remove these three bolts. There's gonna be a connector, but underneath here, you just push right here, it'll unplug. Then you're gonna have this little clip right here that literally just holds this fuel line, this plastic in, and it just slides in just like this pushes straight through and it has like a little clip lock, kind of similar like a Ford would on, on their stuff. And obviously the little tip faces up and then all you'll do is you'll pull up on the fuel line right here, has an O-ring inside of it. And we're gonna go ahead and modify this so that we can do what we're gonna do with the surge. <coughs> I'm gonna try um, to run the surge on the OEM pump in the tank, um, at least for now to get it started and then I can discuss with my friends about modifying that and everything else too. But for the time being, to get it done, it's gonna serve the purpose. So you'll, you'll remove everything with the eight millimeter all the way around the tank. Um, kind of hard to see while I'm recording at the same time, but I'm using you guys as a light, so no big deal. So yeah, you'll go ahead and remove all the hardware. Once you remove the hardware, you're just gonna go ahead Oh, I missed one. Move this over here real quick. We're gonna end up cutting this off later. Since we are gonna be running all new lines and doing everything for like a real race car setup, um, I'm gonna be doing this a little bit different than you would do for a typical fuel pump install. So don't just kind of follow me on doing this to your car, what I'm gonna be doing for um, getting it running. But uh, yeah, give me one second to push this out. This little hanger, there you go. This top piece pops right off. It just kind of holds it in place. Then you're able to get to the actual fuel pump. Um, when you lift up on the fuel pump, there is gonna be a leveling unit back here. And also there's gonna be a Venturi hookup in the tank. Let me go ahead and get this out real quick. All right guys, so here is your standard, super shitty Lexus setup that you have for all of your GS300 and IS300 cars. So this is the Venturi I'm talking about. So this is set up to suction fuel from the one side of the tank to the other side of the tank. So you can kind of blend both sides since it is a saddle style tank and you just have to be kind of suctioned um, over to the other side. So your fuel pumps in there, uh, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go ahead and pop uh, the bottom half of this off by just kind of pulling on it. Be careful you don't break the float unit because the front units are really fragile in these cars. Um, so just kind of be reasonably gentle. Uh, this part will pop off the bottom. And then you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to go ahead and remove um, this little uh, regulator that's in here. This is what makes it so that you can't boost your car. Um, this fuel pressure regulator, this is built into the pump as I've explained in multiple videos for your good old IS300 engine. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out and I'm gonna weld it shut and we're gonna put it back in so that we don't disturb any of the factory stuff. And then I'm gonna try to modify this OEM feed for the pump to making it to like a fuel line adapter. And then basically right here, if you can see there's already a hole here, we can pretty much put it wherever we want, but I'll probably put it somewhere close to there. Um, we're gonna have to drill the top of this assembly um, out and then just have basically fuel come back into the tank. So we have a, a return line since this is a return the style system. So. so this is what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna go ahead and grab this line right here 
since we're not gonna be using this at all, I'm gonna try to convert this. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this back here and then we're gonna try to shave it down and see if we can get a barb out of it real quick. Okay, so this is what this thing looks like. We gotta get a blade and slice this down and see what size fuel line this can go on this piece. Places are to get okay, so check it out. It actually does have a barbed uh, hose right here. So it's actually pretty great for your feed line. You can actually reuse this then. If you just shave it off with a razor blade, it just has some, some shrink wrap hose that you would typically see on all the other stuff. So pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and see what size fuel line slips on this right now. And uh, we'll get this done. Okay guys, so this is called a bulkhead fitting and uh, this is gonna be pretty important for what we're gonna be doing right here. So I've already gone ahead and drilled the hole here. Um, you can see it goes directly down the straight through. If you look through this side, you'll see where you're gonna have to center your hole where it would typically be draining. It is a little offset because at the top over here, you're gonna want enough room to be able to fit it through, which is about this size. You can see it go right through. So what it has is some Teflon washers a washer up here and then it locks on to to uh the place that we're going to be actually holding it down to and then leaves you a room to also be able to screw on another dash six a and uh drain but this is just going to be for the drain line so we'll be running a 5 16th barb adapter off of this as well so really quickly i'm going to go ahead and uh, go pick up some sealant that i'll show you guys what you need to be using to do this um it's called seal all you can get at your local ace hardware So this is the stuff right here, guys, that you want to use. It actually works for alcohol, ethanol, or anything fuel related. You can kind of see right there. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and pay for this right now. Guys, this stuff is only $7. And it'll, we've actually used it to seal the whole entire fuel hanger before for gas tanks. So this stuff works wonders. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to cure. So what I'm gonna do is I have to leave today to run some errands. I'm gonna go ahead and do this seal wall. Uh, on the bulkhead fitting before we um, I leave today to run my errands and then I'm going to come back in the evening with it done so we can go ahead and run our fuel lines and hopefully get the the IS300 started today because that'd be dope so let me get back to the shop real quick and we'll go ahead and do all this stuff I'll show you how to do it okay guys so I know it's kind of hard to see because of my other lights on right here but I've already went ahead and put the fuel hanger back in the car and you can see now we have two barb fittings coming out of the tank um, the plastic one that we put in earlier is going to be the feed line and the bulkhead is going to be the return line. Um, this is just going to be feeding the surge. This is going to be kind of draining back into the tank through here. As you can see, we don't really move very much. We need to get the bolts in so that the whole entire hanger assembly doesn't move. There is an O-ring in here that seals the tank and keeps it from leaking. So... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put all these in real quick and tighten this down. And then we're gonna go ahead and start running all the lines for our surge. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. All right, so right now we're gonna be starting to work on the surge tank and uh, we're gonna do three 6 a.m.s and one 8 a.m. for the feed. Um, obviously, if you've seen the other videos, two powers for two pumps, one ground, it'll all mount on the bottom. You'll first go ahead by removing these three bolts. They also have washers here that are o-ring uh, you don't want to lose either for the hardware and then all you're going to do is give it a nice firm pull and uh, you'll see the top pop off like a radium setup um, that's going to have all that um, on top right here it's a nice lubed o-ring nice sealed tank uh, so what we'll do really quickly to get this going is uh, in the nuke setup we're going to have obviously ports for twin pumps so we're gonna have to get two of these that will go here and then obviously we're gonna have to have some other pieces along with the o-rings that go there and then you're gonna have your rod that will screw into the bottom of this and it's pretty much as easy as just tightening it down down here at the base of this there's going to be um some threads and a place to put a um, wrench down here. Go ahead and tighten this down. And then it's just gonna be just as easy as loosening this top nut up here. And then you're gonna basically have your twin pumps for Walbro 450s that are gonna be here with this little O-ring that'll crush down on both the pumps. So let me go ahead and set this up. I also, which is different than the other one, 
uh, purchased a install kit from them that makes it all so it's just like real quick disconnect kind of uh, submersible hose style kind of similar to that because this is the old setup that we ran last time that we absolutely hated so give me a few seconds to, to set this up and i'll show you guys how it's all going to look when you're done so this is the install kit that you're going to get uh there's two different part numbers for these but one of them is uh this is the kit right here the other one doesn't have a label so we're gonna go ahead and open these i've used this kit before it's really really nice so let me open this up real quick and get everything tightened down and i'll show you how we get this done all right guys so this is pretty much it i need to put a filter on the bottom of this still but as you can see two pumps two grounds two powers two grounds and uh, pumps are already ahead and tightened you got your two tr automotive pumps 2627, 2627, so both Walbro 450s. And then I'm gonna go over the little quick install, uh, the quick install kit for what we're gonna be doing. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna give you a block off and they're also gonna give you this adapter right here. Well, this adapter is a quick disconnect. So all you're gonna do is push up and it locks in and it's on a swivel fitting, which is super, super cool because then it just kind of makes it so you can twist it and not have to fasten anything in any particular way. Um, they give you also these crimp, uh, crimp connectors if you have the tool to do that. Um, so then you're going to have these other two quick disconnect lines here with the submersible hose attachment at the end that you'll get your heat gun, you'll slide them down, and then you'll just go ahead and put those clamps on them. So pretty much all we're going to do here is, sorry for the mess, you guys, and trying to do this while I'm on the, on the phone recording this for you guys, but you're going to go ahead and do that. You're going to go ahead and do this and push it straight up and on. Mind you, I am not left-handed. Hold on. Let me switch hands. Sweet. That feels way better in my hand. Still can't get it up and on. Are we popped? Let me go ahead and put this down real quick and we're going to go ahead and get this on. And then basically all that's going to happen once you get it on is these hoses are going to loop uh, down into each pump. You'll clamp them down and it's as easy as that. You guys, we're gonna be done with this. Uh, obviously I'll put one more filter on this. We'll drop it right in. We'll put the four screws that we're gonna have right here that we do not wanna lose back in and we're gonna be ready to fire up. So we need two seconds to put this together so you can see it finalized and uh, we'll get it back in the tank. And just like that guys, uh, it's on. I just need to put some claps in uh, and uh, that's gonna be the end of it. I mean, with these submersible hoses, uh, they can pretty much bend and go kind of wherever they want because they're on the swivel quick disconnect uh, fitting setup. Um, so you don't need to worry about kinking them. You can actually do like multiple uh, bends with this and just go like this around in circles if you wanted to. Um, so there's no right or wrong way to do it. You just need to pretty much push them down and um, I heat them up a little bit to slide them on and that's going to be the end of it, guys. So um, I'm going to go ahead and drop this in right now. Uh, take a thumbnail or go ahead and put it all in the car right now and we'll make sure and pressurize everything and let's see how the whole fuel system turned out i'll walk you through how i ran everything on the car um so you can see how i would set up the surge tank in your personal car there's multiple ways to run the lines which i'll kind of go over as well but that'll pretty much conclude the video so real quick you can see right here brand new unique performance you got all your wiring all your um system right here just to kind of show you how this works and do it kind of real briefly you're going to have your one ground which is a red wire i'm going to sheave this so it looks black so they don't mix it up you're going to have two pumps that are getting powered up by the relays that are down here at the bottom that i need to mount still and then you're going to have three lines so what's happening now is your oem gas tank is pumping in a feed line and then it has to be able to bleed off when this thing gets full back through and back into the tank, obviously, so you can return fuel. Now you have this line, which is now your, your dash 6AN return line that's running to your fuel rail. And then you're gonna have your 8AN feed line that's gonna run all the way up to your engine. So there's a fuel filter underneath there. All that's gonna be all good to go. And uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. We have a lot of cleanup to do still today. Um, so I will show you when all that stuff is done. I need to get the exhaust on the car. I need to get a wide band on the car, get a bunch of parts finished and then we need to get this thing started. Um, so luckily, like I said, I didn't wanna bore you guys with doing the intercooler piping because obviously it's not that big of a deal, but she just looks super, super great. And I cannot wait to get this thing started and to get it back on the road. She's alive!
the setup in here already all hooked up. I don't need to pin this anymore, so we can go ahead and pull that out. So that's good to go. Surge is all hooked up back here. It's open exhaust right now, so I still gotta finalize and button up all this. I'm gonna have to probably run a secondary relay back here, mount all this stuff up and make it look really nice, but super excited this is running. All right, guys, well, as you can see, she runs, she lives, the, the fuel system works great. Um, I highly recommend doing this to your car because, I mean, it just makes it so nice to be able to not have to mess with the OEM fuel assembly. And then, I mean, you can put something like this, it's gonna make, you know, 800, 700, 1,000 horsepower with just that much fuel system. Uh, so, I mean, a simple $500 purchase with two pumps is enough to just get the job done. You will have to do lines. I would say in all in all, you're probably gonna spend somewhere between 750 and 850 for the whole entire uh, system, but you'd spend that anyways buying like a triple, a triple fuel pump hanging from powerhouse racing or whoever else you decide to buy it from after lines and everything. I think this is a little bit better. I like how it looks in the trunk as well. You can kind of put it wherever you want as well. And it's pretty easy to, to kind of get to the pumps instead of having to get into the tank and pull it all out and mess up your float unit and kind of do all this stuff that ends up going with all this stuff. Um, it's very accessible, very, very easy to use. And I mean, it works flawlessly. We use it all the time. So until next time, guys, keep up with the video. Q's car is going to be running and getting dyno this week. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, until next time, guys, peace.